Hello, welcome to the fifth and last video for this tutorial series. Let us now begin. On the global player script, just below the load data function, we will create a new function named, save underscore data. This function will be called whenever we wish to save our inventory's current state. If you noticed in the last video, when adding new items to the inventory, although you can see the items showing on the inventory's item list, they were not saved to the player data file. Therefore whenever rerunning the game, the inventory reverts to its previous state. Under this new function, we will be calling the global data parser function, write data, and we will pass the following parameters. Now just below the inventory add item function, we will again create a new function named, inventory underscore remove item, and it will require a parameter named, slot. Under this function, on its first line, I have created a condition, checking the ID of the item on a specific slot if it is less than 1. If true, the condition will then terminate the function, but as I have figured out later on, we do not need this condition, kindly skip to the second line. Next, we will create a variable named, new amount. We will then store the current amount of item on a specific slot, minus 1, as its initial value. We will then check if the value of the variable new amount is less than 1, if true, we will replace the item on the past slot, to an empty slot item, meaning an item with an ID of 0, and an amount of 0. Then we will return an integer value of 0 terminating the function. Now, if the new amount is greater than zero, we will update the slots item amount from our inventory dictionary, with the value of the new amount variable. Then we will return the value of the new amount variable, terminating the function. Now, we will create the function inventory underscore move item, and will require two parameters named, from slot, and, to slot. This function will be called, whenever the user clicks on the move button on the item menu from the player inventory scene. On this function, we will declare a variable, temp underscore to slot item, temp meaning temporary. We will then store the data from the value of, to slot, from the inventory dictionary, as its initial value. Next, we will then set the data of the inventory slot value of variable, to slot, to the data of inventory slot value of variable, from slot. And finally for this function, we will then set the data on the inventory, value of variable from slot, to the value of variable, temp underscore to slot item. On the player inventory script, under the window dialog item menu variables, we will declare a new variable named, active item index, we will initialize its value with an integer of negative 1. The active item index will store the index of the slot from the item list, whenever the item menu is shown when clicking an item using the right mouse button. Then another variable named, is moving item, we will initialize its value to false, this variable will determine if the user has pressed the move button from the item menu. Now on the function, on item list item right mouse button selected, we will add the following lines of code. First a condition to check if the variable is moving items value is set to true. If so, we will terminate this function. And second, is a condition which will check if the item's ID from the function's dictionary variable, item data, is less than 1, if true, we will again terminate the function, preventing the item menu from showing. 
Now, let us attach an event listener for the window dialog item menu, whenever its function height is called, then we will connect it to the default node. On its generated function, we will create a condition, checking if the variable, is moving item, is set to false, if so, we will set the value of the variable, active item index, to an integer of negative 1. Now, on the window dialog item menus drop item button, let's attach an event listener for when the button is pressed, and connect it to the default node. On its generated function, let's declare a variable named, new amount, and initialize it with the return value of the global players function, inventory remove item, passing the value of the variable, active item index, as its parameter. Then, we will check if the value of the variable new amount, is less than 1, if so, we will hide the item menu, otherwise, we will update the text of the drop button to the value of the variable, new amount, parsed as a string, and concatenate it with the text, drop. Then call the function, load items. Now, on the window dialog item menus move button, let's attach an event listener for when the button is pressed, and connect it to the default node. On its generated function, we will set the value of the variable, is moving item, to the value of true, then hide the item menu afterwards. Now, on the item list node, we will attach another event listener for when an item is selected, and connect it to the default node. On its generated function, we will construct a condition, checking if the value of the variable, is moving item, is set to false, if so, we will terminate the function. Otherwise, we will set its value to false. Then we will call the global players function, inventory move item, and we will pass the parameters, the value of the variable active item index, and the value of the variable, index, then finally, we will call the function load items. Now, I almost forgot, return to the function, on item list item right mouse button selected, just before calling the item menu pop up function, we will set the value of the variable active item index, to the value of the function's variable, index. It is crucial to update its value to the current item slot from where the item menu has been called upon. The global player functions, move item, and drop item, will always reference to this variable's current value, to determine which item is to be moved or dropped from the inventory. Now, let us also return to the load items function, and apply the following changes. The following new lines of code will set the item list to not show a tool tip for an empty slot, and prevents the empty slot from being selected by the user. Now, switch back to the 2D view, duplicate the load button node. Then rename the button node to, button underscore save, then from the inspector, set its text property to, save. Move the save button just below the load button. We will then attach an event listener, for the button pressed event, connected to the default node. On its generated function, we will simply call the global players function, save data. When the user clicks on this button, our inventory's current state will now be saved to the player data file. Now, let us test our inventory.
we are now finished with our basic player inventory system created using the Godot game engine. Congratulations, this now marks the end of this tutorial series. Kindly leave a like, subscribe, and enable the bell notification icon for updates regarding future tutorials, leave a comment below for your feedbacks, suggestions, and questions. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.